Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Karen, and this channel used to be all about the keto diet, but now I'm kind of shifting gears and I'm going more health, beauty, fitness stuff. I still do diet challenges and reviews on anything beauty or cosmetic and that kind of stuff. But today, this video is about the cream 5 fluorouracil and it is a chemotherapy cream and I wish I knew about it sooner. So that's why I'm making this video. Hopefully I can alert somebody about this cream before they go through what I went through. So I'll tell you a little about, bit about my story. I had my first basal cell when I, I think I was 36 or 37. It was on my shoulder. They removed it. And then fast forward, what, eight years later, nine years later, I had another one on my back. So at this point, I wish that after my second basal cell on my body, one of my dermatologists recommended this cream to prevent future basal cells. But it was never recommended to me. I actually found out about it from a friend that was using it. Uh, none of my dermatologists ever mentioned this cream to me. So what the cream is, it is a chemotherapy cream. You put it on your face twice a day and it brings out any precancerous lesions to prevent them from eventually turning into basal cells and leaving horrible permanent scars on your face forever. So making this video, trying to help other people not go through what I went through. All right, so five fluorouracil, put a picture of it here. At the end of this video, I will show you footage of just me using the cream. Uh, what you do, you do it twice a day, morning and night, for two weeks. And the lesions usually, like the first week, wasn't bad at all. Hardly even knew I was using it. So the first lesion came out at the one week mark, and then it progressively got worse through the two weeks, and it continued to get a little worse even after I started, stopped using the cream. But it, by four weeks, everything was kind of healed up. So I have seen horrible, horrible YouTube videos of people doing this cream all over their whole entire face and their face is raw and they say it hurts and they're in pain. So I didn't want to go through that. So what I did, I just did a section. So I was diagnosed with a precancerous lesion on the center of my forehead and my dermatologist recommended getting it burnt off or frozen off, frozen off. Never mentioned this cream, never said it was an option. So. I held off, I didn't go back to get it frozen off, and I actually had a friend that was using this cream because she also had a basal cell removed on her face, and the doctor recommended using this to prevent any future basal cells. So I'm like, why did nobody ever recommend this to me? So I went back to my dermatologist and I mentioned it. I said, well, my friend's using this, and they said it might prevent future basal cells, future scars on her face. And he said, sure, yeah, we can do it. Okay, so he prescribed it for me. I went home, got the cream, started it, and I decided just to do my forehead. Because, I, like I said, I saw these horrible, horrible pictures of people with like, big red raw faces and pain. So I did my forehead, and I'm going to show you the footage of it. It wasn't bad. If I knew about this, I definitely would have done this like every January, maybe a different section of my face, just to prevent any future basal cells from happening. My question is, why did nobody ever recommend this to me? Could my scars have been prevented if somebody did recommend it? Is there a downside to it? Because I had no side effects. I mean, possible side effects of chemo, like losing hair, stuff like that, nausea, nothing, nothing like that happened to me. It wasn't that bad. The lesions on my face, you know, I just did my forehead so I could cover it with my hair. Like, it wasn't horrible. Not like I couldn't leave the house. So I did some research and the only thing that I found negative about the cream is if you have an undiagnosed basal cell, like something on your face already that is a basal cell and you use the cream, it could possibly only heal it superficially. The basal cell could be really deep already and it will kind of make it look like it's gone, but it's still there just deep under the skin. So then by the time it comes back to the surface again, it could be much worse. So that might be a downfall. So just make sure that you talk to your dermatologist, you get everything checked out on your face before you start using this because you don't want any undiagnosed basal cells getting worse growing, you know, deep under the skin. 
but definitely talk to your dermatologist. If you had any skin cancers on your body and you're a young woman or man, like, you know, why wouldn't this be recommended to prevent future scars on people's faces? I, I don't know, I don't know, but hopefully I can, you know, enlighten some of you and you can do this, just work it into your yearly regimen, you know, January. We usually do dry January, you know, stay inside, there's not much to do in January. Anyway, so why not? Do a section of your face, you know, wherever you're, or your chest, wherever you get basal cells, you know, try to prevent it. All right, guys, so if you wanna watch my footage, uh, if you wanna watch my video of all my horrible, horrible Mose procedures, they're pretty graphic, like big holes and stitches and everything, I'll put a link to it up here. You can go ahead and watch what I went through and hopefully nobody has to go through anything like that. If it's as simple as using this cream twice a day for two weeks, once a year, why would anybody have to go through what I went through? After two Mohs surgeries on my face, I decided to get two more lesions biopsied. Just got back from the dermatologist. Got another biopsy done. I wanted him to biopsy this spot on my nose. Just because it's more like a hunch. I know my, my grandmother had a, a basal cell right there in the same spot. And I have a little brown spot there, but he said no. He's like, it's going to leave a scar. He's like, just watch it. So I'm going to just watch that one. There's another spot on my chest. I should have taken a before picture. It was just like a white scaly spot that had a little elevation to it. So I had him do that one too, but he did not want to do this. He's like, there's really nothing there. I'm like, I know, but there was nothing here and it came back positive. Just do it. So he did it. But I think I'm being very paranoid and overly cautious right now. And hopefully both of these come back negative and I can stop this craziness. So that's the biopsy he did. It's just a little elevated because of the lidocaine. <sighs> oh, and I also, while I was there, I had him just inject this with um, cortisone. I think he did 0.04% catalog just to try to flatten that raised area of that scar. And this is how this one's looking. It's looking pretty damn good. I mean, that was a, a decent size hole for her not to make a longer incision. Pretty impressed, actually. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And this one I didn't, I don't, I'm just gonna leave that bandaid on for now. Like I said, I am being overly cautious now after all I've been through. So hopefully this is it. I'll get my results back in a week. So the chest lesion came back positive. I had another Mohs surgery done on that, uh, but the forehead was just precancerous. The doctor recommended just freezing it off and that's when I brought up the fluorouracil cream. And that's when he said, yeah, sure, we can try it. So I decided to just do my forehead and I put a generous amount on twice a day. Make sure you wash your hands afterwards because you don't want it really absorbing into your skin. So it's been a week and the first little spot came out and it's exactly where that precancerous lesion was. And this is after two weeks it's really not that bad. There are a few more spots coming out over my eyebrow, but nothing crazy. And this is week three. So this was definitely the worst of it at the end of the three week mark. And then by week four, it was pretty much healed up. I decided to do the back of my hand along with my forehead just to see if maybe my skin was just sensitive and I would get lesions no matter where I put it. But no, nothing, absolutely nothing came up on the back of my hand. So it really did only target precancerous lesions. All right, guys, I hope you like this video and I hope you guys stay on my channel. Even if I'm not doing keto right now, I hope some of you guys aren't doing keto either anymore and you'll stay with me and keep watching my channel for all my informative videos and my beauty videos and cosmetic things and product reviews and all that. Thanks for watching. Bye.